Okay, here we go. Welcome back to another day of positive parenting. Debbie, where are we working on today? We're still working on setting limits and sticking to them. And so today I'm going to do an exercise. Um, and it's, an, it's to set clear limits and follow through. You have to be comfortable asking for what you want. And you have to be comfortable saying no. And so we're going to do an exercise in this. And those of you that have been through the class with me, you've done this before, but you know, doing the exercise the second time, you always get different things out of it. So um, enjoy the second time around. It's like watching a movie over again. You see little nuances that you didn't see the last time. So what I want you to do is just, if you're comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to think of like six or seven things that you want. Like just what are dream? What are some things that you want in the world, in your life, in your family? Just, just think of what you want. Um, and then when, you're, when you've got six or seven of them in your mind, go ahead and start talk, typing some of them in the chat. So let's see what, what do people want? What is on your list of what you want in the world? And as you hear other people's ideas, go ahead and write yours down. If you have a piece of paper with you, write it down um, on a piece of paper because we're going to use this in a moment when we go into the breakout rooms. Um, so write down the things that you want. And as you hear people, vacation, yeah, that's what I want too. I don't, I used to take vacations all the time and now I'm always home because I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> um, oh, more grandchildren, Lori, that's so sweet. <laughs> your own house. I love it. Yeah. So as you see other people typing their things, you'll probably get some ideas. So write down a few more and tell you, I want everybody to have at least six before we start the exercise. Um, and what we're going to do, and I'll, I'll explain this again, because I know people are still jumping in here. And um, let me see how much time. I need to give Jody a few minutes. Does anybody, I'm going to just take a little break as you guys are brainstorming what you want and writing what you want in the chat. Does anybody have a success story, something that worked well based on something that we've talked about the last few days? I'd, I would interject that in here as a little, little thing if anybody has one. I guess I should have warned people ahead of time. Everybody's thinking, <laughs> what's worked? What has worked lately? What has worked? All right, well, let's just keep right, making your list then of um, six, six things that you want. And when you have them, let me know. I'm going to sit and read two bedrooms on the beach. I love it. Ooh. Oh, the perfect caregiver. Yeah, that would be good. Happy. That's a good one. And Debbie, these can be personal, professional, huge, or you would like your favorite sandwich from your favorite restaurant that you used to go to but haven't been allow yourself to dream and and just say it financial freedom yes that's great and a happy family a big home love it travel nice car and the pandemic yes i that would be great <laughs> very good Let's see if there's any more coming in here happy healthy flexible yes early retirement oh yeah I don't, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to retire, actually. I think I'll be teaching this when I'm like 90 years old. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Although I'll be really forgetful because I've noticed that like the, I used to remember like everybody's name and the names of their kids. And I, I don't, that, that stuff doesn't stick with me as good as it used to. <laughs> okay, let's see. Somebody typed in a success story, making low carb ice cream with her son has worked and using the gems. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I really love it. Irene, you're going to send your daughter to me. Yeah, I definitely love those, um, those success stories and those kids, those teenagers. They're awesome. A friendly partner. Yeah, that would be fabulous. Okay. All right, are you are we close enough to be able to go into our rooms? Okay, so let me start explaining the exercises because this will take me a couple minutes and that'll give her more time to let more people in. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your rooms and this this exercise has two parts. So part 1 is asking for what you want. Part 2 is saying no. So you have to work together on this. Now you know that you go into your rooms and there's like two or three or four or five people and some people cannot come off mute. All right. So I want you to go into your rooms 
establish who's able to be off mute and who's able to participate chat only so that everybody that can participate can participate. And what I want you to do is take turns asking for what you want and the other person says no. So figure out a rotation based on how many people are playing so that like if I'm person A, I'm going to say, I want a new ranch and person B is going to say no. And then person B is going to say, I want a new car. And if there's person C, the person C is going to say no. And then person C will uh, say, I want a whatever. And if there's a D, then D will say it. And so do a rotation like that and keep asking for what you want and saying no till you got till you have gotten down your list of four or five or six of them. Okay, so this is gonna take a few minutes. So I want asking for what you want, saying no. I want you to go around and around so that you've asked for at least four things that you want and you've heard four no's. So however that works in your room, somebody kind of take the lead and guide people through this. And on the fifth one, I want you to go around one more time and on the fifth one, you're gonna hear yes. Everybody's going to say yes. Now, you don't have to really do the thing they're asking. It's just the funnest way to end this exercise after you hear four no's, which is kind of discouraging. <laughs> you're going to get a yes at the end. Okay, so it's going to be, I want a house. No, I want a horse trailer. No, I want a vacation. No, I want a, a, a new tel iPhone. No, I want a million dollars. Yes. <laughs> Okay, everybody clear? So that you're gonna you're gonna do four no's and make sure everybody gets a turn. Four four ask for what you want, four no's, and then one one everybody ask for their fifth ask what, for what you want with a yes on it, and then we'll come back to the rooms. Okay, and we'll give you about four minutes, and here let's, we go. Let's go. Five. Sorry, Deb, you, I pushed the button too fast. That's so how long, how long would you like to give them? To give them like six, because I, I think okay. four would be two, because they have a lot, you know, if there's three or, how many people are in each room? Five or six people. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna take them a while to get through it. Okay, so. It, I want, is, is Sarah and Patricia staying or going? Uh, looks like they're here, so. Okay. All right, so oh. I want a, I do want a million dollars. No. <laughs> Tell me what you oh, want. Oh, <laughs> I want the perfect caregiver who wants to live in this house and help take care of my mom. No. Okay. I want, oh, Sarah, do you want to chat, chat, type in the chat what you want or come off mute or are you not able to play right now? Sometimes she has tough uh, I know. internet connections. Yeah. And then John, well, I guess John just popped in or was he already here? He must have been here because he's not on my redistribute list. Okay. But. All right, so Rao wants to play. Okay, so tell us something you want so we can say no to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can say it or, oh, I'll ask you to yeah, unmute that. or you can type it in the chat. John, we're doing an exercise yeah. asking for what we want and saying no. Oh, she's gonna come off mute, go ahead. I want a vacation. No. Ask, okay, so uh, let's see. I'm going to ask, so, is it my turn or your sure. turn? Sure, go ahead. Okay, I want a new living quarters horse trailer. You say no. 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 <laughs> okay. I want uh, someone that comes in and cleans this house every week. No. Your turn, Sarah. Okay, so I want a chef. No. That's a great one. I want somebody to come in here and cook and clean. Yes. No. <laughs> what number are we on? You're on number three. You are, okay. there's her. I want a new pair of sneakers. Ooh, no. No. <laughs> Sarura. Okay. Uh, I want, I want foam trips around the world. No. No. I want, Wow, I'm running out of once. That's so funny. 
I want, oh, I want a new, like, video room somewhere where I can, like, record stuff. A, st a recording studio. That's what I want. No. No. <laughs> I want uh, a new TV for this house. No. I want a huge breath taken home. No. no. Okay, I think we're on yes, aren't we? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to make this a good one. I want a year's worth of everything that I need in the world. Yes! <laughs> Yeah, this is more challenging to think like, oh, what do I really want? <laughs> I want a full year of paid speaking um, webinars and arrangements on my calendar all the way through next year. Yes! <laughs> How about you, Sarah? <laughs> Sarah? Oh. I want, I never mean the passive income. Yes. Yes. <laughs> love it. I love okay. it. The yes. Okay. Let's give them their okay. morning. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we Very did good. it, then they should be close to being done. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. At least they get a minute warning. So then. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks oh, for playing, Sarah. Like that. that was fun. Yeah, that was really fun. Thanks for playing. I know you're in a spot where it might not be that easy. So that was fabulous. Hi, Shireen. Nice to see you. And oh, they're starting to pop back. Very okay. good. So that means they were done. Finished. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And as always, we're going to ask for a few people to share. I'd like to know what did you learn about yourself from this exercise? How did you feel about asking for what you wanted? How did you feel about saying no? And how did you feel about hearing no? So commentary on any of those things. If you could wave at the screen so Jody sees you or, um, oh, they're not all back yet. So I should- Not yet. Them. Now they're coming all back. <laughs> yeah, here they come. Here they come, yay. Okay, so we'd like a few people to share. Thank you all of you for being on video. I really appreciate it. It's so nice to be able to see your faces while I'm teaching. It actually really helps me a lot. Um, so the questions are, and we'd like a few of you to come off. If you, if you had any insights, what did you learn about yourself? Wave at the screen so Jody can find you and come and unmute you. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you anything you learned about yourself. How did you feel about asking for what you wanted? How did you feel about saying no? And how did you feel about hearing no? So I wanna get I, uh, any comments about those things. Okay, so Shuban is gonna start and I've unmuted her. Perfect. Yes, hi. <laughs> Um, it was really fun, first of all. <laughs> um, but, um, so I, I tried, well, you know, once you, you're constantly, you say what you want and then you constantly hear no, um, it, it can be a, a bit discouraging, um, especially if it was some, say, uh, when you're thinking that this is something really important that I want, and then you get a no. Um, <laughs> uh, but also, when, when it was my turn to say no, then, then you're now thinking that maybe that is something important that that person wants and then you're saying no or you know something that that really matters to them and then you can say no so i didn't feel nice saying no to that that would be um you know discouraging someone or, or not being able to grab them what might make them a little bit happy um and i find uh well that what i think is when it was time to say yes because i i don't know maybe it's because we are anticipating or we know a yes will come now it was uh, um more well you thought more of something that was really 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 uh you know great to have or really thoughtful to say i want this because you know you will get a yes yeah <laughs> so i did that I, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was great awesome awesome insights shivana thank you so much and yes i i love that i mean what you were describing it sounded to me like oh that's like learning empathy like you're here you're hearing the no and you feel like you know what it feels like. So now you're more sensitive when you're saying it. I love that. Like, I haven't even thought about that before. That's like a new insight for this exercise for me. So thank you for that. Who else wants to share? Deb, and there's some great comments in the, the chat please, about, please. Yeah. yeah, here we go. Um, it's hard to ask for what you want, even harder 
hear, to hear no. Uh, somebody else said, everyone in my group was so friendly that even when they said no, it didn't feel terrible. Somebody else said that they were discouraged and as if they're not being heard. Um, this was a great insight. Hearing no uh, makes me feel like I'm going to stop asking soon like after continuously hearing the no. Uh, yeah. Julie said yes was such a relief, felt so good. Uh, hearing yes was great and some things were harder to say no to than others. It was really great insights there. Yeah, those are awesome, you all. That's fabulous. I mean, like what what an amazing insight into how hard it is to ask for what you want. And oh, let's see, there was another, there's still, at least these are still going. I love the comments they are still going. This is great. Um, yeah, so part of, part of being able to set limits is being able to ask for what you want, being able to say no. And in this part, hearing no, is a little kind of off topic, but I just like to include that because some, and somebody mentioned it, getting discouraged when you keep hearing no. Our dreams are out there. And if you had trouble figuring out what you wanted, that means you've stopped dreaming. And part of having self-esteem is to keep dreaming and keep finding what you want. I found myself in that situation. That's usually not me. I'm usually always dreaming, but I think being stuck here during the pandemic and stuff, I've kind of just skidded to a halt in my life. <laughs> so time for me to start dreaming again. Um, that was my awareness uh, doing this exercise. And, um, and yeah, it's, and sometimes how many of you, did, when somebody asked for something, and I forgot to do this to Jody because uh, I usually do this to people. It's like, hey, can you watch my kids for me? And then somebody has to say no when you want to say yes to help me out, right? And if you found yourself having a hard time saying no to people, that means that setting limits is going to be challenging for you. So it is important that you can say no, because what happens when you say yes to somebody when you really need to say no? Do you know what happens when you say, when you say yes, when you really need to say no? See some comments here in the chat about that. Well, wow, there's so many chats here. I love this. Uh, Are we coming in? Yeah, oh, we're, I we're hearing that boundaries get crossed. You start to feel resentment. Uh, yes, you deny yourself those things that you really want, feel overwhelmed. Right. And so the way I like to look at it is that it's mean to say yes when you really need to say no. It's mean to your friends and people that you love if you say yes. Because what you do when, with that resentment is you either nitpick at them or you be mean to them. Or if it's a friend, you might like not answer their calls or avoid them. So it's really mean to other people when you say yes, when you need to say no. So you've got to get your courage up and start learning to say no when you need to say no. Uh, what happened when you asked for what you wanted as a child? Let's just look at some of those because some of that can that can also give us some insights about this. What happened when what yeah, what happened when you said no as a child? And I think somebody else, one of your comments was kind of referencing this. And Jody, can you just read when the responses come in? Yes, I will. Uh, Lori was saying you can say no nicely. Uh, you can't <laughs> say no to dad. That was some insight. You, they, were, they remember feeling guilty for asking for things. Right. Um, yeah, so all this, and we're gonna talk more about this tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about the things that we do instead of setting limits and how we know our limits are being crossed or violated. I'm gonna give you like 12 ways that are signs your limits are being violated. And then we'll talk more about the issues that we need to set limits on. And then Thursday, we'll get to the actual three-step process for setting limits. So all of this is just to inform us and look at those areas um, and understand what the challenges we're faced to simply tell people what our needs are, what our boundaries are, you know, what we're willing to tolerate and not tolerate as we talked about yesterday. So it's really, really important for parents to be comfortable with saying no without feeling guilty. It is vital to our children's safety and well-being 
to have parents who role model this effectively. That's why we're working on it for ourselves, asking for what we want. We're not even thinking about our kids at this point. We're working on this for ourselves because we need to be able to role model setting effective boundaries, limits, because otherwise our kids will not learn how to do it. They have to see us role model setting good limits, setting good boundaries. They have to learn from our example of how to say no in their lives when they're confronted with situations like with their peer groups that are dangerous for them for with drugs and sex and gangs and violence and all that sort of stuff. If we do not role model a strong stance for setting limits and boundaries and saying no to things, our kids cannot learn it. There's, there's just, there's no way for them to learn it. So this is our job. It's a, a very important job we have. I'm going to read a story to you. And it's so funny. I had, I pulled this out. This is something I printed out um, back in 1997 and it's out of uh, the chicken. Remember the chicken soup for the soul books from forever ago. This is out of one of those and it's called Angela's store Angela's story. I think it's what it's called. When Angela was 33, she was a lawyer's wife. She had a home and family and a nice suburban life. She had a little boy of four and a little boy of nine. And if someone asked her how she felt, she always answered fine. <laughs> but one cold night near Christmas time, when her family was in bed, she lay awake as awful thoughts went spinning through her head. She didn't know why and she didn't know how, but she wanted her life to end. She begged whoever put her here to take her back again. And then she heard a voice from deep inside, a voice that was soft and low. And it said, it only said a single word. And the word it said was no. And from that moment, Angela knew exactly what she had to do. Her life depended on that word. So this is what her loved ones heard. No, I just don't want to. No, I don't agree. No, that is yours to handle. No, that's wrong for me. No, I wanted something else. No, that hurt a lot. No, I'm tired and no, I'm busy and no, I would rather not. Well, her family found it shocking. Her friends reacted with surprise. But Angela was different. You could see it in her eyes. For they've held no meek submission since that night three years ago when Angela the angel got permission to say no. Today, Angela is a person first and then a mother and a wife. She knows where she begins and ends and she has a separate life. Yay. I like that little story. I had to dig it out of the archives. <laughs> okay, so I would love, I, that's all the curriculum I have today. So I would love some comments, some more stuff from the chat, any observations, anything anybody would like to share. We have a few minutes left. Sure thing, Deb. And I wrote an article, actually, I interviewed a friend of mine who's a brilliant engineer. And what I loved was he, uh, here, hold on a second. He took the experience of saying no and put it into five steps. And so the link is in the chat there. But what Ooh. I loved about it is it maintains the relationship. And uh, um, so, so I hope you read it. I'll put it on the Facebook page as well. But what I loved about it was he has this very mechanical mindset thinking, and I tend to be much more emotional and I think about what they're gonna think of me and what they're thinking and feeling. And like, it all gets very confused and wrapped up. And what he did for me was to just clarify and spread it out. So that, that <laughs> was, you know, please, please download that and read it if, if you're interested. And I think so many of us uh, grow up as young women and then household, <laughs> women running households, that, that we get asked so many things and being able to say no and explain what we are available for and what we're not is a great skill and it builds our confidence, it builds our, our efficacy and it, and it is just, yes, yeah, so people pleasers. Like we as yet, women get 
trained for that and reinforced for that. So saying no can come with a whole bunch of other uh, emotional baggage, but doing it well and maintaining that relationship and rapport is possible. And it's a skill that we can learn and practice. So um, yes, enjoy that and practice. Debbie, would you say the name of the story again? And I'll write it in the chat if people want to have that Angela story. Yeah. I think it's called Angela's Angel. And when I Googled it today, I popped up because it was from Chicken Soup for the Soul. So um, that's how, it, that's, yeah. So I guess it, you have to probably get it out of that book. If you, I didn't search further to see if somebody just has the whole, the whole essay printed. I could look, I might've put it on my old website a long time ago. I'll see if I can reestablish re that as a new blog post. I didn't even think of that. Maybe just take the link and uh, share it on the Facebook page. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so we say, if you want to say no, this is important too. People sometimes need to be told no, N-O, uh, to help them grow and assuming that they can handle it. Yeah. Um, if you always say yes, when you want to say no, there will be a price for this avoidance. Yes, that's what we're talking about here. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. And I wanted to share also, as a parent, you probably find that you have to say no of what kids are requesting for. And they ask so many times, and to, how do you not crush that spirit? For me growing up, if I didn't have it all figured out, the answer was no. And I wish, and now one of the things that I work on with my husband is being able to ask for things that I would like in the house or, and not have it all figured out, but be able to work as a team to brainstorm and think creatively. And maybe it's no right now, but in a year or when we hit you know, when we have a certain amount of budget set aside. And, and so being open for the conversation and letting that creativity and, con and uh, relationship flourish. And with kids, I think that's interesting too, that they might have an appreciation and an understanding of finances or resources are limited, time is limited. So when you say yes to something, it means no to other things. And training, that is a great life skill to have as well. And how do you say, build some family goals? What would we like for this family? Not just for me individually, but that's an interesting thing maybe to bring into the family meetings if you're practicing that. Like what are some dreams for this family that we could do given the state of the world and travel and you know, quarantining and just the way things are. And maybe the kids have exciting, interesting ideas to make this all a little bit more palatable and enjoyable. Yeah, and I, and I can just say for those of you that find it a challenge to say no and, and struggle with it because you, you know, you're feeling bad or you feel guilty or any of that stuff, I've found all every single time i've had to um get some courage and some resolve to just stay no and say no and stick to it whatever it is when it's taking care of my needs my boundaries myself it always ends up being right or better for my kids where i can see after the fact that oh I, this was really good for them they either step up to the plate in some way or they become more responsible or they become more respectful. Something good always comes from my becoming courageous enough to state what I need and to follow through with it in the, in the moments that I'm most scared to do it. So that's been my experience over and over and over again with this, that, um, and I, I fret a lot in my parenting. Like when I was parenting my kids, like, you know, I struggled with challenges of like, how do I do this? What's the best thing to do? What am I going to do? And, you know, I really don't want to bring the hammer down or, you know, be mean or do whatever it is. But ultimately when I had to set some kind of a limiter boundary, I did come up with a way to do it with love, with respect, with remorse, with um, compassion, with empathy. And I could do it in a way that I was at full integrity for myself. And as hard as it was, and I've set boundaries in tears before, you know, it's not always an easy thing. And, and the tears weren't, weren't, um, it, the tears were just everything. Compassion for me, compassion for my child, whatever it was. And it always, always ended up being the right thing and the best thing and, and helping everybody grow and learn. So 
be courageous. That's my biggest um, suggestion to you is that be courageous and, and do it when you most don't want to. That's the, the coaching here is the times where you most don't want to, where you have the most fear is when it's time to do it. Yes, and we are out of time for today, uh, but the chat is going wild. And <laughs> there's so much here. This is, this is life work. This is continual professional, personal growth for our whole lives to figure out uh, how do we communicate well and effectively and with respect with those we love and work and live with. Uh, somebody in the chat asked, what do you do when no isn't respected? This, this is such a big, broad topic. Couldn't possibly fix this in a half an hour. But this, know, see all the people on the call today and know that uh, there are a lot of people working on this and wanting it for themselves as well as their loved ones and their kids. So practice small things. Practice with what it is you want. That's a great activity. That's quite an affirmation. Uh, share it with the ones that you can trust that they're not going to crush you uh, for even wanting things. Find those allies, find the loved ones that want great things for you and practice dreaming. A lot of people responded in saying, I, I have forgotten how to dream. I have stopped dreaming for myself. That's big. That's an incredible insight and, and one that you can reverse. You can start dreaming. Groups like this, there are supportive people uh, there are amazing people in your lives, I bet, if you look around and reach out to them. Uh, so take really good care of yourself. Uh, Debbie, I have a request. Okay. Uh, I would love to do a class picture if you are willing and able. We'll just, uh, if you want to come on video just super, super fast, and we'll take a video pic picture of all the videos, like I love it. Style. Let me fix their hair. Yeah, let me yeah, fix this. there you go. <laughs> Look good. <laughs> so sweet. Oh, I love the smiles. Okay. We will do a couple of these. Awesome. I love, Thank you. I love it. Okay, ready? One, <laughs> two, three, smile. Okay, lovely. I will share that with Debbie and she will find a way to share it somewhere and we'll blur out names or do something like that if if we need thank to. You. Um, but thank you, everybody, and we will see you again tomorrow. 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 Okay, bye, all. See you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye, Kish. Bye, Michelle. Bye, Devora. Bye, Fred. Bye, Sorora. Thanks for showing up today. That was rad. Bye, Chita. It's great to see you. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.